<laughs> Hi guys, it's that time. That's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, yesterday, as I closed, I told you that I was going to teach on Are People Healed When They Die? This is a request through one of the viewers. And um, it's interesting because just before, the day before he sent me this message, I had been teaching this to someone and uh, then I get this request from him. So I want to talk about this, and, and I'm going to read a little of what he said. He said, hello, uh, Faye. Uh, would you do a teaching on death? That sickness and disease leading to death, I'll add that part, leading to death, is not God's ultimate healing. Okay, what he's meaning is, is God using death as his way of healing someone of a sickness or disease uh, because he hears so many Christians saying this and believing this untrue teaching. And he says, I heard a lady testify her mother died of lung cancer and received God's ultimate healing. And I do want to talk about that a little bit today. Now, I want to lay a foundation here, uh, a couple of them. Number one, uh, you're not going to convince this little girl right here that it's God's will for anybody to be sick, okay? Jesus came and was beaten on a Roman whipping post. God gave everything he had to give to set us free, not just to save us from going to hell. He came to restore us and make us whole. God never created us or any of his creation to live in sickness or pain, and it breaks his heart to see what Satan caused to happen to his precious, precious creation. And nobody's ever going to make me believe that God wants anybody to be sick after what Jesus did for us on the Roman whipping post. In the, in the Greek, that word stripe it's singular, not plural, by his stripe. And what that means is there was not one inch of Jesus' body that did not get beaten. And that is why you couldn't even recognize him to be a man. And he was just this glob of flesh and blood of goo. But anyway, that's another teaching. But you will not, the beating that Jesus took was to set man free of everything that was hurting them. It's salvation, sozo, the word sozo, is not just not going to hell and being saved from eternal damnation. The word sozo means, let me flip over in my Bible and I'm going to read it straight off my notes. Sozo, saved, healed, delivered, protected, preserved, made whole, and kept safe and sound. Made whole and preserved includes healing for all people. So let's get started on this. And that's my first foundation. I do not believe that God wants anybody to be healed after Jesus paid the price to get us healed. That's why Jesus said in Mark 16, 17, and 18 that believers would go out and cast out devils and that we would lay hands on the sick and heal them and that we would even raise the dead. Okay, now let's keep running. I want to go over to uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 because I want you to understand some basic things about uh, who we are. So here we go. Uh, 1 Thessalonians, this is in my expanded Bible, by the way. Now may God himself, the God of peace, make you holy in every way. May your whole self, spirit, soul, and body be kept faultless, blameless, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes. And the reason I read the scriptures, I want you to understand one simple thing that we must understand about who we are and how we were made. We are a spirit with a soul living in a body. Who you really are is your spirit man. The program, like a software that's installed in you, is your soul. Your soul is your mind, will, emotion, your personality. All of that is a makeup of what has been poured in you your whole life 
whether it's through other people, what you've seen, what you've heard, and what you have spoken makes up your software program and your soul, okay? And then we have a body. We live in a container. See, this bottle, this container, holds the water. So my body is holding my spirit man, okay, which has been uploaded, its software program, my soul, and my soul is a makeup of everything that's been put in me by other people and what, I, what I've listened to, whether it's music, movies, what I've read, all of that makes up my soul. Okay, so it's very important that we understand this because the Bible tells us to renew our minds. Remember that? And then, of course, so when we get born again, God gives us a new spirit, not a fallen man spirit anymore. In fact, I'll just throw this in for free today. Did you know when you get born again, you no longer have a sinful nature? You have a new nature given to you because you have a new spirit in you. What you have is old programming in your software and old habits. So you have to reprogram. You have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You renew your mind through the Word of God, and what you're doing is you're reprogramming your software, okay? This is a, is a good teaching, and I'm going to try to get over to the part about death is not God's final, ultimate way of healing people. So anyway... What happens is as we live on this earth <laughs> through our own will and even things that happen to us that we don't get to decide, our container gets broken down, okay? And uh, I believe John G. Lake said this, and I might not be perfectly accurate, but he said that all sickness are small doses of death. And once you get enough of the small doses of death, your body can no longer hold your spirit and soul, see? Okay, so as we go around and we get these small injections of death, which is sickness, at some point our container can no longer hold our spirit man who also has a software program of our soul. So once that body, the container, breaks down, and can no longer hold our spirit and soul. Our soul has to leave the body because it's no longer a viable container. Uh, I'm going to read this straight off of what I responded to him. And uh, I said, wow, I just taught about this yesterday. There is no healing line in heaven. Only our bodies need healing. Okay. When the container, our body, can no longer hold our spirit, it has no place to remain and must depart the physical realm of earth. So our spirit goes to be with whichever spiritual realm, the unseen realm, we will go to that spiritual realm's kingdom where we hold our citizenship, okay? Now, if my citizenship is in heaven with God, my spirit will go to be with God. If my spiritual citizenship is in the kingdom of darkness, then I have to go and be in that kingdom. I will depart. When we depart this earth, we go to be in whichever kingdom we are the most like and who we have citizenship with, okay? Uh, let me see what else I wrote him. And I said, uh... uh the sickness and disease uh, will die off because it loses its, its uh, source or the host to feed upon because, see, sickness and death has its own life source, okay? Your body functioning gives it its life source, but once a person passes away, that sickness and disease, just like cancer, Cancer has a, a life force or a, a life of its own, and it continues to eat away to get its life off of your healthy cells, okay? So once a person departs and their body is left, that sickness and disease dies on its own in the body, okay? So the container is left there, and the stuff that calls the holes in the bottom of it stay there. But our spirit and soul are not sick, 
our spirit and soul, our soul and spirit goes to be with whoever we are the most like. Okay, so the body healing, if you want to call it that, more accurately, it would be called restoration, will be at the resurrection. When we are resurrected, when Jesus comes and he resurrects the dead, then our bodies will be completely healed or restored, and he will make us immortal, incorruptible, and eternal beings just like we were at creation in the garden, okay? So he'll resurrect our bodies, and that's when our broken containers will be completely restored, and our spirit and soul will come back into our bodies, and we will be back in our original creation. Uh, I hope this teaching has helped you, but listen, I have heard this, guys. I've, I've been to many, many funerals, and I'll hear the person behind the podium say, well, you know, God may not have healed them on earth, but they're healed now. When they get to heaven, they either get healed here or they get healed in heaven. And I understand that they're trying to comfort people. But did you know that's not really actually a biblical truth, okay? We can tell them that the person is no longer in pain. That is a truth right there. They're, they're, they're not in pain anymore. But the truth of the matter is, is that there is not a healing line in heaven. There's not a healing line in heaven. There's not people standing there with their little pull tabs where they get in line and wait till their turn so they can get healed in heaven. No, the moment that body which is broken uh, is not viable enough to hold that spirit and soul, the spirit and soul leave and they are in heaven and before they ever get to heaven, they're not sick anymore. And so I pray that this blesses you. You know, it is, it, it, but it's simply not true. It is God's will for every person to be physically healed here on this earth. And I'm going to give you a scripture. It's Romans 8, 11. For if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the de dead dwells in you, that same spirit will quicken and make well your mortal body. That scripture right there tells you that it is our mortal bodies that need to be made well and to be healed, okay? Well, God bless you, and I will see you again right here. Bye-bye.